teachers begin with new students with pastels. They always tell them to get this Canson pastel paper. And I hate this stuff. It's terrible work for trying to get uh, the pastel to stick to it. On one side of the paper has this texture that looks like little boxes that I really dislike. On the other side, it's smoother. But I think when students are learning pastels, they would be very frustrated with this paper. So I always say that you should start with the best materials, just like in oil painting, if you get student grade paint, you're gonna be frustrated mixing colors because they won't mix correctly because there's more binder than pigment. And the same thing is with pastels. If you buy the really cheap pastels, you're gonna have more binder and they'll be super hard to use. And so anyway, if you're gonna go into a uh, new medium, try to buy at least a few of the artist grade materials so you won't be frustrated. One material I used to use when I uh, started doing pastels again after many years is um, suede matte board. It has a really soft texture and it will just grab a hold of the pastels really nicely. Just trying to Okay. Um, I've used this for many pieces that I've been really happy with. Um, the only place I get this is scraps from framers, and so you can't just go to the store and find it. You have to go to a place that sells all kinds of map boards where you can get a sweet map. So that's a little harder to find, so I don't use that too much anymore. Um, and then uh, this product from France is called Pastel Mat, and this is one of my favorites. Um, you, most of these papers you can't get locally at Blix because Blix will not stock them for us. So we're, Bill and I are trying to get Blix to stock more papers. You can get these all on Blix website, but you can't get them locally. So Pastel Mat's my favorite. It's uh, the texture of it feels like just really soft paper, it's not sandy, but it grabs the pastels really great. And you can also tone it, like this piece was a piece of white, and I just took wash, and I just gave it a wash with wash <laughs> to, to tone it. So that, it takes a, a water nicely. Um, so that's one of my favorites. Um, one of the other ones that's out there is called UART. Used to be called um, um, <coughs> with A, Arsta or something like that. Um, what it looks, it comes in all different grades, and what it looks like is sandpaper, but supposedly it's artist grade. Looks like it's used sandpaper. This is the 400 grit. That's my favorite. Um, and it's really tough. You can do all kinds of different things on it. You can do water washes. You can do um, Gamsol washes. You can do lots of things on it to get the paper ready for the pastels. Um, it feels a little like the Wallace paper, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, and it's a little more reasonable, for, re reasonable price than Wallace. I'm going to show you Wallace in a minute. Uh, and it's easier to get. For a while, the Wallace paper, which is the standard for a lot of the big pastel painters, uh, there was a manufacturing problem with the Wallace several years ago, and they changed a different process. And now it's been hard to get because the new paper's coming out, and everybody's been so backlogged on back orders that it's hard to find. So um, this is one of the good ones. The, they have two different forms. They have professional grade and they have museum grade and the difference is the cardstock that it's on. This one is called Belgian Mist because it's a nice color that's other than white and this is my favorite of the Wallace. This is the professional grade which is a little lighter weight and then they have the museum grade which is a heavier cardstock and this just comes in white and if and you can feel the difference of how stiff it is. And you can do a lot of stuff with the museum grade with um, underpaintings. There's that. 
So then there are some other new things that came out um, from Richardson. Uh, these are little gator board supports that are already coated with their property, their um, proprietary pastel surface. I haven't opened this one yet, but it's got just a little bit of grip to it. And this one, I think, is the same brand that it's on the hardboard. And I, I was given these, and I haven't tried them yet, so. And then a new product that's out is called Multimedia Artboard. And it comes in white and black, and it comes in a lot bigger sheets, but I just brought the smaller ones. It's, uh, it's like a resin paper. It, all mediums, one board, one solution in it. It's a uh, constructed of paper thermal set resin, will not cause support discoloration of acrylics, blah, 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 the archival, all that stuff. Um, the thing about this is it will not work with any surface wetness you put on it. So it's good for acrylic painters. You could use it for um, oil paintings. You can do all kinds of different things with it. You can layer it with collage and all that stuff. One of the things that pastelists are doing with it, they're putting their own texture on it and um, using the wet underpainting techniques. They also sell this now with a pastel grid already on it, but I haven't found that yet. So I'm good, I always like to make my own. <coughs> Um, so this is some of that paper that it's talked about, multimedia paper, and these are two different versions of a recipe that I make of my own that I want to try. And I, I've coated the paper, but I haven't done anything with it yet. So um, I'm going to show you some of those in a minute. This one is actually the Golden Fine Pumice Gel. I like this a lot because it's ready-made gel that you can slather on whatever paper you want to use or boards you want to use and let it dry and you're, it's ready for pastels. Um, I don't like it because it's kind of milky looking, but it doesn't really matter because you're going to cover it up with uh, your pastels. Then some other products that you can put on your own papers is golden acrylic brown for pastels. I, I don't like this one as much as the, the fine pumice gel because of the grit and it's too fine for me. I want a little more grit. And then Colorfix, who the Art Spectrum Company, they make boards already ready made, or they sell their primer ready for you to use yourself. This is clear, but you can buy all different colors of this. And, and this is not too bad. Um, so I've tried some of those. And let's see. I was going to talk about underpainting first. This is the Wallace paper, and this is shows three different ways of doing an underpainting. Um, this is these are pastel. This one is actually oil paint. So this is a hard pastel lightly put on the paper. Generally, what you would do is start your underpainting or any painting with your darks first. So. Imagine this is the basis for a tree. So I just put some purple on there lightly, and then I just sprayed it with water and let it run. And if you look, I'll pass this around so you can look at it, but there's some interesting texture that you get on this sanded paper with the water. So that can make a really pretty underpainting, and you can even leave some of that showing through in the end. This one was the same process, but with just alcohol sprayed on it. And I don't like that effect quite as much. Some people have really good luck with that. This one was actually thinned down uh, gambling oil paint. And then you let the, you put a little, put a little extra bandsaw on and just let it spider web. And this works really well for an underpainting pastel. Pass that <laughs> um, Then. A lot of people make their own recipes, like I said, and I have some handouts if any of you are pastelists. You can have a copy of my recipe, and um, there's, I've had this saved from online. It's a recipe book of handmade pastel surfaces for pastel, and I can't find this in one form on the internet anymore, but there's a 
I have a link on top of here that somebody has a link to a lot of good pastel things, so you might go find it on there. So you can look at this, but don't take this one. And then um, Richard McKinley is a really well-known pastelist and oil painter. And this is out of his book about underpainting techniques that you could even use some of these ideas for oil painting. So I, I think I only brought 12 of these because I didn't know how many people were going to be here, but take one if you want. Um, one thing I was doing with my own concoction was I wanted to paint it on paper, but I was having trouble with it warping before I found some of these other things. And I had a bunch of inkjet high gloss paper for my own printer. And I don't use my home printer because you know how it sits there and you don't use it for six months. And you go to use it and things clog and you gotta get new ink. And blah, blah. So I had all this paper up there. I thought, well, since it's an inkjet paper, it's used to being wet from the ink. And I thought I'd try it with my under my pastel surface goop. And it works really well. So that's what I have here. You can see some of the texture shown through. After it's dried, I put some pastel on there to see how, show you how it works. And then I did the same thing on the multimedia board. Um, now my recipe is taken from several different recipes that I found online, and I found the one that works for me. I like to do a black surface with the mixture, or I use just the off-white mixture. So this is just on. Um, museum board, so it's it's a little stiff. Um, and the good thing about painting on something like this that's already stiff, you can mount this in a frame with spacers without having to put a mat on it, and it'll look really sharp without the mat. So, so my recipe is I use either black gesso or clear gesso or you could use white, matte medium, and pumice. And I use the 4F pumice, which is super fine. 4 is F is fine, so it's 4F pumice to give it the grit. So I have a really scientific method to do this. I use a paper bathroom cup as my measuring device. Easy to throw away when you're done. and. It's all about ratio, so if you wanted to make more of a higher quantity of this stuff, you could figure out the ratio. But one of these mixed fits in this, and that's enough to do quite a few boards. So I, I've saved, if you want to see what this mixture looks like, you can come up and look at it, but it just it looks kind of goofy and that's the black, the gray, and then this is the black. So what I do is I fill this cup halfway up with a gesso, whichever color I'm going to use. Then I take the matte medium and I put just a layer of it on top of that just so it covers. And then I take the pumice and I use a windy spoon to, depending on my recipe, which you will see there, I either take a spoonful or a spoonful and a half, depending on which gesso I use and I mix it up. Now the black and the white gesso is thicker, so you need a little spoonful of water, but the clear gesso is more fluid, so you don't need the water in. And you just mix it up in here. And um, then I use, I take a regular house painting brush, this is the one I use, and I moisten it down so it's wet with water. And then I just spread it on the board, and you just spread it on quickly and let it dry and wash your brush out right away. <laughs> and then if you don't feel like it has enough texture, you can put another coat on later on. Um, and it, some people take the clear gesso, because it has more grit in it than the regular gesso, they use this by itself for a, a, to put on for a surface for pastels. It doesn't have enough grit for me, but a lot of people use that. Can you tint that? Yeah, like if you like the, that's why I use the clear like sometimes. Even, like, even a little acrylic or something. Yeah, or? you could use the fluid acrylics. The regular fluid, fluid acrylics in the tubes would be too thick. Anybody, but I would use like a fluid one. But that's why I use the clear sometimes. If I already have a matte board that's red and I want that, 
I, I mix this up and although it's a little milky color, you can still get the color like that through it. Um, but I enjoyed it working on the black. Um, so that's my recipe. So there's a lot of different things you can do with pastels other than just painting on the cheap paper that you buy when you're a newbie. So that's it.